Hello everyone, I have a single page scrapbook layout for you today. This one is going to be great for utilizing scraps. I have been working on a December daily album using the Christmas story collection. So I have lots of bits and pieces because that's a six by eight album. So we get all these random small pieces. I am making a 12 by 12 with these two photos. They are three by four plus the white border. And I'm telling the story of my husband and I waiting for the kids to go to sleep on Christmas Eve. So I'll be documenting these two and my focus is using up these scraps. Now I actually bought several packs of the Christmas Story Collection because like I said I knew I was using it for December daily as well as some 12 by 12 layouts. So I still have plenty of full 12 by 12 sheets. Typically I build my layouts on a solid sheet of cardstock, but we're gonna go with this fun pattern paper. The opposite side is this uh, really pretty Christmas plaid, but I need something subtle in the background so it's not overly busy. So I grabbed any piece that was a scrap and then I also, I got the workshop collection. So that came with a ton of bonus pieces. So I've got all these kind of banners and tags and things like that to work with along with the pocket cards and the, of course, the coordinating embellishments. I keep the bigger pieces in this tray, which makes it easy to grab, but then all of the tiny pieces I just put in the little bag, and this actually came with the collection. It had embellishments in it. So that just keeps everything together, and then they're ready to go. I kind of have an idea for this. I've done layouts similar to this, and it just is using a lot of these pieces to create layers. So I have a couple big pieces of this one here. So let's start with that. I don't think, I often kind of do a, you know, a big piece across the center and then you can put a title there or embellishments, but I don't really like the plaid as my background. Let's try one of these and see what that looks like. I do like the black. There's a lot of black in the photo, my little dog, and I'm wearing black, and then I love the gold glow of the warm Christmas lights. So some gold accents might be fun to bring into. Are these the same size? Let's see, yes they are. And this is six inches by six and a half. So it's a little bit, um, if you have those six by six paper pads, you can use those as well. Let's just center this. Using my Versamat, I can use the grid lines. I've got, since it's six inches, I've got three and nine. So I know that that is centered. And not that it has to be centered, but that's kind of a good place to start. And then the photos are very similar. This one's a little bit more of a candid shot. I'm looking at my dog. This little, this is Luna. It's my youngest son's dog and she brings us presents all the time. So I don't know if you can see that. She has some wrapping paper in her mouth and she likes to bring it and she's just showing it to you. You can't actually have the present. It's just for you to look at. So in this photo, I'm looking kind of this way. So the way my mind works is I like to kind of utilize that with and you know, for my photo placement. So I'm looking into the layout and that's why I decided to put this photo on this side. So now we can just start playing around. I don't think I'm gonna use that one. Let's focus on these tiny pieces here. So let's see, more of that. And then we're just again creating lots of paper layers. So let's see what this looks like. And we can always trim them down if we need to. And then, I don't know if I like this stripe. Let's try this side. I like that better. And I'm probably going to bump those in so they're not the same length. I want a little bit more obvious, um, you know, difference between the length of these papers. So I'll have to trim those off once I decide. Since we have all of these pieces, let's just look through. I'm kind of thinking, I know there's some banners in here, so I'm gonna pull those out. There's actually several, there's black, large one, and then these are actually tags that you can pop the hole out, but I'm gonna tuck them under my paper instead of using them as tags. It looks like the rest are actually tags. There's this one. That's probably not gonna show up on that background. So let's just try these two for now. And then we're just gonna tuck them under here. 
again, just layering all these pieces up. Now, if you didn't, this would be great use of uh, scraps too. We can just dovetail the ends and make our own uh, banner tail pieces here. And you'll notice I kind of have this, uh, you know, starting out wide and then it's going down into a point. I want to create a little interest up here and I was thinking of maybe circular elements like Christmas ornaments, but then I spotted this. This is a doily set and it is still available and I love the interest that this brings in. There's so much texture and I just think they're so delicate and pretty. I have used these on so many layouts. So we don't, we're not going to want the whole piece. We're just going to use a little bit of it. I'm thinking maybe red. Let's try red up there. Yes. And I'm thinking red because we have the red over here. So that's going to bring in that visual triangle that I always talk about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this and I'll be right back. And again, we don't need the whole piece. So this scrap will work perfectly. I ran that through my die cutting machine. Isn't that pretty? I do think I might need to trim that down even further. I have these branding strips. One of them is a full 12 inches. The other is partial, but I thought it'd be fun to bring the black up to the top in this fun pattern. I do see I want that shorter. So using the measurement on my Versamat, I'm just lining that up and I know how much to trim off of the top section of this piece. And then we can just layer this right back where I had it and then this over the top. There's lots more to choose from over in this pile here. I do like this green background. It's the pine background with the nice uh, Christmas pattern on it. That is one inch in height. What if we kind of offset these and line them up in opposite corners, just kind of overlapping? That might be kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and get these trimmed down off camera. So again, each piece is one inch and this one on the bottom is six and a half inches and same for the one on the top there. I'm going to add a little bit of distressing to these layers just to give them some texture and some character. This is a distressing tool. It's no longer available. You can definitely use an old pair of scissors to do this. See how it just kind of roughs it up and gives it that white edge. I went and did uh, the rest of the pieces off camera and now I can go ahead and it start adhering my layers and then we can get to the fun embellishing part. I never put the adhesive all the way to the edge and that way I can easily get my little spatula under there and lift papers if I need to, or I can tuck layers under. So that is just something I like to do when applying my tape runner. I'm using the Tombow Permanent Tape Runner, and even though it's permanent, if you don't really press everything down right away, it is pretty forgiving and you can move pieces around if you want to adjust them. So I'm gonna line my photos up so I know where to tuck this little sage banner piece. And then let me go ahead and adhere this. I'm just putting a little bit of tape runner on because the rest of the embellishments will help hold that into place as I layer them over the top of that piece. As I mentioned in the beginning, I am documenting these photos of my husband and I. We we're just kind of hanging out on the couch, waiting for the kids to go to sleep. It's Christmas Eve, and we want to make sure that they are in bed so Santa can come and visit. My husband and I are not night owls. We like to go to bed early, get up early, so this is not an easy thing for us to do. And as the kids get older and older, they like to stay up later and later, but we want to carry on traditions, so we just make sure everybody goes to bed first and we can make sure the coast is clear for Santa to come and visit. We exchange gifts from the family on Christmas Eve, and then the gifts on Christmas morning are from Santa, so it's kind of fun. I definitely want to add some gold embellishments. I punch them all out of their carrier sheets, so I have some uh, ornaments and banners, there's stars, there's a few title options in there, all sorts of different uh, things to choose from. I put the white acrylic title pieces in that little bag as well. But I thought the ornaments would look really pretty on this page and just bring in that glitz and shine. There's this gold banner piece that matches the other two banner elements right here. So I thought that would look good kind of nestled together. And I want to cover that transition up top, but that ornament is just kind of getting lost. So I thought maybe a black circle. I brought in a couple of my dies just to kind of size that up. And I am gonna go with the larger circle here and maybe put one on the bottom as well. So I'm going to cut a few black circles and then layer them right over that transition piece between the green uh, pattern paper and the doily. 
I'm going to mirror that circle element on the bottom and then we can bring in more fun goodies. I'm pretty sure there was a number 24 in the embellishments. And let me double check. Sometimes because they're all in little bits and pieces, it's easier just to refer back to the catalog image and you can really see what's there. And yes, there's 24 and 25. So I'm definitely gonna find that. And there's even little ornament toppers in the acrylic pieces. So I'm gonna pull those out. But this is a great opportunity to use something specific like the 24 or 25. So I definitely wanna do that. I think I want to put the 24 right up here over the black circle, but it doesn't really show against the black background. So I'm going to trim a piece of this white daisy cardstock just to uh, layer behind the numbers so that those stand out and look nice and crisp. I'm going to use a little bit of liquid glue and just put a few tiny drops, being mindful not to put too much so it doesn't squish into the actual center of the letters. And then this is going to look much better with the white against the back, uh, black background. That's hard to say. I want to add the little white acrylic ornament toppers. So I'm going to just pull out a few of those. And then I also have some bows. Those are white ribbon with gold edges. That didn't come with this collection. I just had them in my stash. And so I kind of put them in here to remind me to use them. And that I like the white up top. And then we'll layer the bow right over the top of that. I feel like it needs something in the corner here, and then my title's going to go underneath the photos. So let me actually trim this down because there's no sense in wasting what is hidden behind the photos. And it, since it is glitter paper and that's more pricey, we want to use that. There are poinsettias from the sticker sheet. There's a larger one and the smaller. I think the large is maybe too big for this area. I'm going to layer a lot of these little sprigs back there. So these are from the Christmas Story card making workshop, which is no longer available, I'm sorry, but any little greenery sprigs or anything like that you have in your stash, or maybe you can stamp them and cut them out, would look great behind these flowers. There are leaves on the sticker sheet as well, but I just wanted more of the greenery. I have a couple different title options. This is a white acrylic piece, the background, and then in red paperboard, it says all is bright. And I love the way that layers over the acrylic in the background, it looks so good. But I kind of have a different title idea in mind for this layout. I have this white acrylic word that says Christmas. There is a piece that says Merry, so you could layer Merry Christmas, but I'm thinking right up here, I'm going to stamp the night before. So it'll say the night before Christmas, which is really more telling of what I'm documenting on this particular layout. While I get these bits and pieces adhered to the layout, I would like to invite you to click the like button. It truly does go a long way in supporting my channel and it helps YouTube know that you are enjoying the content and it will share it out to more of the crafty community. So I would really appreciate that. Thank you. I added liquid glue to the back of the sprigs. They were stuck to the sticker, and so it was a great way to ensure that they stayed right where I wanted them. And now I will use foam tape to pop up the sticker and give it just a little bit of dimension. I love doing this with my floral embellishments, and I'm gonna layer that just slightly over my photo and then the sprigs as well. And then we can tuck in this little red piece right there. You can't have too much red on a Christmas layout, right? Speaking of red, I feel like we need a little bit of red in the bottom section, right down there by that circle. Just there's no red at all, and we have red in the other two sections, so that's kind of bothering me. I did go ahead and cut out a small doily from those fancy doilies, and I'm again, just like the top one, I'm gonna cut that off, trim it down, and then tuck it behind the paper layers here, so just up part of it is peeking out. And then I do have a few stickers. This one says cheers. These are from the sticker sheet and they have gold foiling on the end. And this one says Christmas traditions. We need a little gold down here as well. So I'm just going to pop a few gold stars to bring the gold um, embellishments down. Speaking of Christmas traditions, I mentioned that we like to open gifts from each other on Christmas Eve. Is that how you guys do it too? I just grew up doing it that way, so I carried that on and I love it. I'd love to hear down in the comments below. Are you a Christmas Eve gift exchange person or do you wait until Christmas morning? 
I have one more gold ornament. I'm going to layer over the corner of this picture right here. And then I'm going to bring in some stamps. This is called A Typeface and this is Chocolate Alphabet. Those are retired, they're from my stash. I also have this one called Wonderland Scrapbooking. That is still available. So everything that's available, I will leave listed in the description box below. I use the coordinating thin cuts to cut out that tiny little tab and I'm going to stamp the word Simple Joys. I love stamps like this because they're like filler stamps that would work for just about any scrapbook layout, right? Simple joys, I mean, it's so universal. So look on your stamps for little filler items like this, and you know, it's a great opportunity to use your stamps more. I'm flipping my Versamat over because we are stamping directly onto the background, and that nice foam cushion helps you get a better stamped impression. I'm going to use the chocolate alphabet to spell out the word before, and you want to work backwards. So write it on a piece of scratch paper somewhere so you don't misspell it, because when you are stamping backwards, that is very easy to do. I recommend stamping backwards in most cases because you know right where you want your word to end. So I had the E, now I'm going to line the F up because that's the only one that's going to drop down and I want them to be high enough to where there's room for the F. Hopefully that makes sense. So let me just ink this up, practice a couple times, and then I am ready to put this onto my layout. I'm going to scoot that down so I can get my head over it a little bit easier. Move the F now that we have our positioning and then stamp my E. So I'm going to repeat the process, just selecting the letters to spell out the word before. And then I always practice first because these stamps haven't been used in a long time. And you know, we're stamping right on our layout. It would be very difficult to camouflage this at this point. So I wanna do everything I possibly can to make sure I'm gonna get a good stamped impression. I want to use a tinier font to spell out the night, and we're going to kind of nestle that over the top of the word before. There are tiny stamp sets currently available, and I will leave those recommendations also listed in the description box below, along with everything else that I used on this particular layout that is still available. Before I start stamping these letters, I am going to draw a line. I've got my T-square ruler and a pencil, and I just wanna give myself a, you know, something to aim for to make sure that my letters are straight. It was easy to stamp the word before because I could use that black, um, you know, banner piece to line it up, but I don't have anything up top here. So just drawing a quick pencil line will help you get your letters nice and even. After I stamp each letter, I do have my stamp chamois off to the side and I just quickly clean those up and it helps me just get my stamps right back onto the carrier sheet so I don't lose these tiny little elements. Stamping in black is always nice because if you do need to touch up any areas, everybody's got a black pen on hand, right? This is my black Le Pen journaling pen and it's very convenient for touching up little areas like letters that just maybe didn't stamp right. And I did lose the tittle to my eye, so I have my white gel pen. I'm going to draw that in. I do want to add my journaling to the lower right. I'm going to measure it so I can create a text box and get my uh, journaling sized perfectly. If you have not yet watched my journaling tips video, stay tuned and I'll have that in the end screen so you can find it. It's got great information along with this sticker paper from Avery. I learned about this from Hiba over at My Little Journal and you just run it right through your printer. It's adhesive backed. It does look kind of frosted, but it disappears onto your paper and it allows that uh, pattern to show through and it looks like you printed your journaling right on the actual background. I do recommend you set your printer settings to photo semi-gloss paper from media type. That will give you a really nice print quality. I've tried other settings before and sometimes it's kind of blurred. It's just not quite as crisp. So definitely the photo semi-gloss paper works best for me. You can see how that just completely disappears. You do wanna burnish that so it has a really good contact with the background. I love how you can see that pattern paper right behind the text. I'm going to call this layout done. I am loving all that gold sparkle and shine. It is so perfect for Christmas. And how cool that we made this with scraps. Hang on to those little bits and pieces because, you know, you can always put them to use. 
Thank you for spending time with me today. I truly hope you enjoyed the video. For the journaling tips video, you're going to want to click the one on the bottom. And if you're looking for more inspiration on using scraps, check the video on the top. Thanks for watching.